Sounds good. Looks like I'm doing better now. Some days Facebook lets me go on live horizontal and sometimes it doesn't. And no matter what, it shows me the direction I want it to look. Um, so yeah. All right. So while we're waiting for people to hop on, I thought I'd quick go through tonight. Um, we'll be doing a layout using the sketch I provided. But I thought while we're just giving people just a minute to hop on, sketch is going to be with May's kit and I thought I'd quick go through this will be my fifth layout you guys with May's kit um I love it and I love all the kits but man some of them speak to you more than other ones and I love this one so I thought I'd quick in case um you're not on scrapbooking stores page um, or don't see it all the time in case you miss some stuff. Um, these layouts have been on the scrapbooking store page, on the club page, and on my own personal as well. Oh, by the way, I'm Samantha Taylor with Taylor Stamped um, here for scrapbooking store. I forgot to introduce myself. My apologies. All right. So this is the very first one I made. Um, those of you that played along with the sketch challenge for our... National Scrapbooking Day. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, might recognize this one. So this one was off the sketch. That's me and my ridiculous Basset Hound Kevin. Uh, this is the very first layout I made with this pack, actually. just I, I love the family theme of this. So that is layout number two. Layout number three. Another family one here. Layout number four. And if you look at this, um, hi, Jennifer. Hi, um, Perva. I hope I said that right. And um, if you look at this one, you will see that this is actually the backside of, or the second half of this piece. These two fit together. And the backside of this piece is that yellow. Um, so using all my pieces, didn't even trim it down. Did it on an angle and flipped it to the side. And this would be um, number Four with this month's kit and you'll see me put together number five and I will probably still have enough paper left over to eke a sixth one out um, and I love pattern paper <laughs> I use a lot of it um, if you're a little more heavy into using cardstock or a little less pattern paper um, layering you'll get even more out of the kits but um, six out of a kit like this is a lot for me because as you can see I love my pattern paper mixing and matching all right, are you ladies ready to get started then? I thought I'd show you what I've done already. Um, I do have a little bit of extras. I'm not planning on using these tonight. I kind of have an idea of what I'm using, so you can see what I've got left over, plus my trimmings from, um, from not using quite all of these sheets of paper too. So I will get started and give you a quick overview of what I've got here. So I've got some dimensional adhesive. These are just pop-up glue dots. You can also use foam dimensional adhesive. Um, full disclosure, I also uh, create, besides for scrapping the story, I also create for glue dots. So you'll see me using glue dots products because I love them and also create for them. So I've got a tape runner, just your regular tape runner here. I've got my sketch. I print it out small just so I can kind of refer to it without it taking up the whole space here that I'm working with showing you guys tonight. And I try to keep that in screen as best as possible. We'll see how I do with that. I've got my photo. Um, this is just slightly smaller than a five by three and a half. Um, I print out my own photos at home on my photo. I've got a photo printer, so I just print them out on my own. You most print shops will do a three and a half by five as well. I also click a little button that basically says shrink the photo to fit. This was an iPhone photo and so they don't actually do four by six or three by three and a half by five. So it shrinks the edges a little bit. Um, because I print them out at home on a four by six piece of photo paper, when I trim them down, a lot of times I leave this little white edge. You can get the same, same look by backing it with white cardstock if you don't print at home or don't have that extra bit around it. Or you can leave it off. I just really like it probably partially because um, it's what I'm used to. And then I have, I did a few little trimmings ahead of time so you guys don't have to watch me cut paper. This essentially is two full-size pieces of 12 by 12 paper, almost two six by 12s. This one's about four and a half by 12, and this is a six by six. Uh, these are all, these two are full sheets left from the kit. 
these are all scrap pieces from those other four layouts I showed you. So the one layout, I had some triangles framing a photo. You get those by taking a six by six piece of paper and cutting it in half. So I've got these six by six sheets left over. Um, I also basically did the same thing six by 12 and I only needed one little six by six. So this is the leftover six by 12 from that. So you will, um, um, my, yeah, I'm so glad you finally made it to a live too. Um, but anyway, so sorry, I, I get distracted by your guys' comments. <laughs> um, I basically, um, I'm using scraps here from my other layouts, plus I had two full-size sheets of paper left. Um, like I said, I did a little bit of trimming, so you don't have to watch me. I will be using the add-ons as well. This comes with May's core kit, this sticker sheet, and I would swap some of these out for some of the add-ons if you don't have the, or the upgrade part of the kit. Um, the upgrade this this month is one of my favorites too. These are the three bits of upgrades. And like you see, I have, I have used and used and used to this. So I'm going to set those off camera for a minute while we go here. And I'm going to refer to our sketch here. As you can see, I have this black outline and then the white base. I actually am going to layer up two pieces like this. I trimmed this one down already, so you don't have to watch me on camera trim this one down. But this is your 12 by 12. This started out as a 12 by 12, and I took a half inch off of each side. A lot of times when you trim stuff down, you're taking a quarter inch off when you want to frame things. If you take a half inch off, you'll get a little bit wider edging around on a layout for just a little bit more of that color and that pattern peeking through. I'm going to show you guys a trick now. I always like to give you one trick when we do Facebook Lives. If you don't love using up two almost full sheets of 12 by 12 pieces of paper to start a base, I'm going to show you a little trick I do sometimes. Or if you love this and you want to use this side and to use it all on one, on one layout is just killing you. That's what I usually get in trouble with. I use, I'm, I'm liberal with my pattern paper use. I use it all and layer it up but sometimes I want to use both that front and back side because I love it. And here's where you're going to watch me trim on camera. All right, so like I said, I took a quarter off of the sheet that's layering over it. Okay, so that makes sense? So I took a quarter off. So I'm going to trim a square out of the center of this paper because it's going underneath this big full sheet of paper. So you're gonna have enough structure and you can hide that big empty space underneath because no one's gonna be looking at your backside, hopefully. So you, you can get a piece of eight by eight, 10 by 10. If you're, if you're really like living on the edge, 11 by 11 sheet of paper underneath. Now remember, I took a quarter inch off, so um, of my pink paper. So that's going to be 11 and three quarters. Oh no, I, I apologize. I think I said I took a, I took a half inch off. Yeah. Um, I took a half inch off. So that's gonna be 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So I just want to make sure I have a little bit more than a half inch border going all the way around. A half inch border can be kind of thin and flimsy and I'm just trying to save some of this. So I'm not going to do quite as much, um, or quite as little as a half inch. I think I'm going to go closer to probably about an inch and I'm going to use kind of this on my paper trimmer. I just eyeball this. You can get more exact, but I always like to say I'm a lazy crafter and I do it the easiest way possible. So I'm going to go about an inch here. I'm going to go about an inch in this way. Um, this trimmer doesn't have the measurements this way, so it makes it a little bit harder. Um, I really like this trimmer, but wish it had those measurements. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of guess at about, and it's a rotary blade, so it actually cuts more towards the hmm, middle than the front edge. And I can kind of see my measurements here. So I'm just going to pop those down. And you can see now I have a cut here. I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to actually kind of line up to that cut mark that I already have. And yep, a little over an inch, which is fine by me. And I'm going to take my cut up, do the same thing down about an inch on that side, twist it. So I'm just going to my cut line that I already have up here and eyeballing close to about an inch down. The only one where you might have a little bit off is this last line if you don't measure exactly. And you can see I've got one that goes in farther, one that goes out this way more. I'm gonna go into the one that's more to the inside. And I'm gonna line up my trimmer. Ooh, and I just about, 
I'm not paying attention and talking to you guys. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and sometimes you can see I didn't quite meet up on my corners here, and you can either be really lazy and rip it just a little, or you can grab your scissors and give it a little snip or throw it under your um, paper trimmer again. Make sense, guys? Questions on that? All right, so just a nice way to get a little more out of your paper. Um, or if you just really love that front and back side and you don't want to give up the whole 12 by 12, this is a nice way to use this. This makes a really nice um, photo matting on another layout, a nice big fo uh, focal piece on another layout. All right, I am pretty much done with my paper trimming now, so I'm give me a second while I pop this out of the way. And I won't need this paper for this layout at least, so I'm going to slide this off to the side as well. And now... What you're going to do is stick your adhesive so you cover up that big giant hole that you created. All right. I like to do this two ways. Because I have this gap here, it makes it easier to put in my book if this isn't catching on other things. So I do like to put a little adhesive right around this edge here. Sorry, guys. I don't think I'll ever get used to working around a camera a little bit. <laughs> And then you're going to do, hey, Jennifer, um, right around this edge here. So fun fact, guys, this Jennifer Taylor here that's on, I don't know if you see her name on there. She and my sister-in-law share a name. And so when they pop up on my newsfeed, sometimes I have to check which, which Jennifer is who based on their pictures. <laughs> All right. So I've got the outside edges here because this is my top sheet and I've got the inside edges here with adhesive. And ooh, I got some adhesive peeking out there, sorry. All right. I was a little wild and crazy with my adhesive tonight, guys. All right. And I'm gonna line it up. You can do a better job when you don't have the whole world watching you. Or at least about 80 people. Wow, guys, this is a nice group tonight. Thanks for joining. All right. And so this way, it's nice and firm. Because I've got my adhesive around the edges here, you can pick up and move this like it's a single sheet of paper without too big of a deal. All right, that's your tip and trick for tonight. Now we'll continue on with building our layout from that sketch there. All right, so my next piece is going to be this big, tall piece here. I happen to have this six by 12 sheet left over. Um, and so I just happened to think that would be a really nice frame to this piece of paper because man, I think this is my favorite pattern in the whole kit. <laughs> I am definitely gonna be using all of this piece I know. And I like that this blue behind it kind of makes it pop off, off a little bit. I don't have a second layer in the sketch here, but that's the great thing about sketches. You can freestyle a little bit and make it your own or follow it exactly if you are a rule follower. All right, so I like to do my layer pieces first sometimes. So I'm gonna just get my adhesive along the edges here and I'm gonna frame it out. Now this one, like I said, I cut a half inch off around the big sheet. Um, this one I did a quarter inch. So this is six by 12 and my piece on the inside is five and three quarters by 11 and three quarters. That makes sense? I thought it gave kind of a different look to have the paper run all the way from the top to the bottom instead of having it layer onside this inside sheet. It's kind of a nice way, um, when you do a border like this, you can get some different looks if you layer your paper using the big outside piece as your base or sometimes you can use this border and build off this inside sheet. So what would be this pink sheet and use that as your base um, and, and build off of that, if that kind of makes sense. All right. Um, the thing that I'm cutting with is a Fiskars um, cutting tool. Um, I have a number of different ones. I have one from We Are Memory Keepers and I have um, a couple of Fiskars, and I'm trying to think of the name of my other one. Um, I have one that's actually big enough that I can cut, put a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and go corner to corner. I pretty much only use that one for big, huge projects like that. But yes, my, my other one is a Fiskars. Um, that one I like quite a bit. I like the rotary style blade. Um, there's basically three kinds of blades. So you have a rotary blade, you've got uh, the slide blade. I kind of forget the name of that one. That's that little kind of pin blade that, that slides down. 
And then the last style is that guillotine. If you remember from like school cutting a bunch of papers at once, that's that guillotine style. And Cutter, Cutterbug, I think, is the, the company that's fairly famous for making their guillotine style. I like the rotary blade. Um, I can usually find those at local craft stores or um, online shops. All right, so I've got this layered on. <laughs> you're not, you're, if you're a copier, you're a creative copier. Um, but yeah, no, you can be a rule follower instead of a copier, definitely. I'm usually a rule follower, but I get a little wild and crazy when it comes to sketches sometimes. All right, so my next set on this sketch here is um, two, you can see I've got a long strip by this dark, but there is a small underneath. And what I had in mind when I created this sketch was using up some of my leftover six by six pieces that I had instead of, or from that diamond kind of shaped layout that I had done. Let me show you guys quick. So you have a, they are left over from this layout. So this is just a six by six triangle or a square that you cut corner to corner and then flip nestled in this way. Um, so these are left over from that. I had um, different ones because I was kind of trying out some different color combos with that. And so um, I'm, I'm not going to use this one, obviously, because it would be laying directly on top of it. Oh, and I already decided because I love this pattern too, that my long sheet on top is going to be that one. And what I do a lot of is just laying down papers and deciding what I like. I didn't have a whole lot of options left because I had um, so much, <laughs> I had used so much of my kit already, um, but I did have a few options. Um, I do have this too, and this would work, but I just kind of liked the little more white space on here. I do a lot of mixing and matching of pattern papers, and I found sometimes it works well to bounce between a little less busy and busier, but then also to bounce between things that are a little more solid and ones that have a little more white space. Sometimes the best thing to do is just set them on top of each other and see how you like it. I, eh, some things I like better than others. I went mm, with the blue. I've already got the blue. I thought I'd go a little wild and crazy. Um, so I found this yellow and really liked it. And actually, I believe this isn't one of my 6x6 six six extra. That's a little bit larger. I'm not sure what that came from. One of my other layouts, it's a little bit bigger than 6x6, six six, it looks like. I apologize. I was thinking that was one of my leftover 6x6s. Six oh, where in Nebraska are you? I am not too far from Nebraska. I am in northwest Iowa, but we're not too far from Nebraska. Um, anyways, we have... So I've got this kind of is what I'm going to recreate here with these two. And after laying some stuff down, I just liked the way the, the, the yellow popped and added a little bit of extra color to my layout. The hardest thing sometimes when you lay out like this is getting your stuff back where you had it. Occasionally, especially if you're laying out a lot of things and you go, oh, I really, really, really like where this is. So say you have four or five pieces like this that you're kind of pieced together and go, ooh, you can either measure, do some measurements where you're off from, or once in a while, I will do a little corner like that. And you can see just a teeny, I don't even know if you guys can see that. Let me, whoo, can you see that little mark of pencil? And the nice thing is, you can either cover that mark up with an embellishment, if you know you're going to put an embellishment there, or the mark is so teeny tiny that you can either cover it up or erase it when you're done Woo! and not stick your paper to it when you're talking to everyone. I'm just going to cover it up for speed's sake, but you can also take an eraser afterwards. I do that a lot as well, and it gives you a little bit better feel if you're a little concerned like, oh, I spent all this time laying everything out where I want it. Now what? <laughs> so, all right. So we've got our last strip across. Like I said, if mixing and matching pattern papers is not your thing, I love it. You can always add some cardstock layers in here instead of the pattern paper. So you could do a cardstock instead of these hearts, or you could do cardstock instead of this outside one. You could make this a big cardstock because it's kind of framing your photo. Like I said, 
I'm a big fan of mixing and matching pattern papers. It's, it's pretty much all I do. <laughs> so your last step for our base layers here is adding your photo. Um, I think I'm going to pop it up on some dimensional adhesive because I just really like dimensional adhesive. Oh, Grand Island. So you're not terribly far in Nebraska there. <laughs> All right. So I just have some dimensional adhesive. Again, mine's glue dots. Um, I really like the pop-up glue dots, but you can also use foam dimensional adhesive. It doesn't matter. It all ends up being the same thing. And, whoo, I almost put us on upside down. All right. This is just me and my husband on a uh, ride on a side-by-side. From this year, this is probably one of the fastest photos I've gotten scrapped. <laughs> all right, so that's your photo then. Now, this is my favorite part. This is the part where we get to add all the pretty embellishments. Sometimes when I do sketches, and sometimes when you find sketches, you'll see bits and places for embellishments. Sometimes I like to leave it to you just to sort of freestyle. I will say I'm not really going to do any journaling on this one. You could really easily add a journaling card to this. Let me grab one from my stash. There isn't much to say about this layout. We were just out for a drive. Ignore the not quite right color here, but you could easily add on a journaling card here. Um, again, if um, another way on that too is if you had two photos, you could really easily add a second photo here. This isn't quite photo size, but you can kind of get the idea here. Or if you have a horizontal instead of a vertical photo, you could really quite easily flip this photo. I would probably pop it up so it's not framed right in the middle of this. Um, and you could have, um, kind of starting at the top here, have a vertical photo too really easily. And always a reminder, you've got one sketch this way. And when you need to do your next layout, turn your sketch this way. And you got a second layout that easily. And it'll look really different. It'll look really different because you're going to choose different pictures and you're, you're turning stuff. Occasionally, you can get another sketch out of it by turning it upside down as well. <laughs> Moving a few things around. All right, so now we've got all of our embellishments. I already saw this sticker, this So Happy Together. I know I want to use that as my title. Woo! There we go. Sorry, once in a while I bump my tripod here, my photo holder, and you guys probably go for a little ride. I know in my layout, I think I put my title up here. I usually love to cluster things around my photo, so my guess is I'm going to end up with it down here because that's just who I am and what I'd like to do. Um, let's see what else. I had kind of a plan for the papers on this layout, guys. This is the part where you really get to see me figure out what I want to do because I had no plan for the embellishments. <laughs> um, I usually start by building around my photo and then kind of go out from there. I really like to build around the photo because it draws all um, that attention and draws your eye to the photo, which is really why we scrapbook, right? To show our photos off and share our memories. Putting a little dimensional adhesive on this bad boy here and sticking it down in the corner. Um, so when you, when you cluster your embellishments around your photo, it really draws your eye, especially if you're like me and you like the busy papers and <laughs> mixing and matching a lot of pattern papers. Um, sometimes there's a lot going on on your layout. So it's just a nice way to go, oh, this is still about telling my story. This is still about the photo. I am going to pull a few, sorry guys, I'm reading a few of these <laughs> while we, while we, do this. I like this. I love us. I think I'm going to use that. Um, I like to cluster my embellishments. So you'll usually see me doing groups of two, three, four embellishments together. Um, I also, there's, they talk about the visual triangle sometimes. So a lot of times um, they're talking about building, you know, a pyramid or a triangle with your eye line. So we start, um, I'm going to start, this is So Happy Together and it's the May kit. Oh, someone's already answering the question for me. So I, sometimes when I start, I end up on opposite corners and then I go, okay, where else do I need to add in so your eye is drawn in that triangle shape? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This layout 
actually draws your eye in a triangle shape because of the way these are clustered at a point down here, all the papers, and then they widen out. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It just, it just works. Let's see. How about Sunshine and Happiness? So this is the upgraded kit. If you don't have this, oh, you want it this year. <laughs> um, the upgrade part of the kit is always some of my favorite. Um, but if you um, don't have it, head back to this sheet. There are a lot of really great stickers on this sheet as well. And then if you haven't used quite so much of your kit as I have, there are a number of papers that also have, let me see if I can find one. Oh, I think I used most of them that also have some cutouts on them. Journaling cards, I believe in two by two and four by four. So there's that. Um, but let me, and you can see when I embellish, I do a lot of this I think we'll go up here, sunshine and happiness. I do a lot of kind of holding stuff somewhere. And then you'll see me um, not quite tack it down until I grab a few more things and I'm sure that's where I want it, if that makes sense. Um, I am going to try to use one of these because I want to show you guys this sheet I really love, but it does throw you for a little bit of a loop if you're not used to using this kind of sticker. So these are a more of a see-through sticker. You're going to get more of a tattoo effect, a watercolor effect, a printed on the paper effect, I'm not sure. So directly on one of these like really busy pattern papers, you're not going to see them as well, especially if it is a lighter colored one. I haven't used, I, I use quite a few of them. So um, it's going to show through this clear area. So I am going to use this gold XOXO because it's the gold. This one actually I can put over um, the pattern paper quite easily. I'm going to go here with it. And for those of you that said you struggle a little bit with clustering embellishments, um, sometimes if it doesn't feel like you have enough or if it just doesn't look right, add one more thing. Um, if you add one more thing and you had liked what you had and you go, oof, that's, ooh, take it off again. Sorry, I saw some people asking about the sketch challenge. Let me mention that in just a second because I thought I'd try and show you one of these. You can see the paper shows through quite a bit. I'm not sure. Well, here, I'll show you. So this one is colored and not that gold foil. And I'm going to add it directly under here. And you can see it pops really well on the pink paper. But any part that's touching that blue paper disappears. So it looks great there, but if I had moved it over onto this uh, plaid paper, you wouldn't have seen it quite so well. Um, I had some people talking about the sketch challenge. So yes, this month's sketch challenge is going to use this sketch. So grab your stuff um, and do what I did here and just start building off the sketch. Uh, you will put it up. I think they're going to have the rules out tonight or tomorrow. Um, but when you put it up on the scrapbooking store page, they will pick a random winner um, at the end of the month that um, for a free stash to after winter. And I believe my understanding is it's just random based on anyone who enters. So if you're not comfortable sharing your stuff, step out of your box. We will ooh and ah over it. It's a really nice community of ladies and we do love to see what you're doing and we love to tell you how much we love what you're doing. If your stuff doesn't look like mine, that's okay. What matters is that you're getting your memories down on paper and that you're having fun doing it. All right. I might add one or two more things. Let me see here. I don't know if this will... Eh, enjoy the view might work just fine on this. Um, these... So choose happy. I have been saving this one. I'm also a knitter. You guys, these make great um, stitch markers for those of you that also knit or crochet. I am not always um, huge on danglies only because I have a hard time attaching them and having them look pretty. I believe it was Marcy did some really awesome stuff with these. She is better than I am. If you look at my layouts, I actually just used the pliers and I pulled this off and unattached this. And then I just used some nice adhesive and stuck it down to my layout by putting adhesive on the back instead of clipping it on. I am going to add my enjoy the view right here. 
All right. I've got some um, of that pop-up dimensional adhesive again. It's just nice and squishy. It makes it easy to do something that's a little non-traditional with the metal there. All right, guys. I think that is about it. Um... I'm considering one other thing. I, I have a hard time having just one little little guy up there all by himself. So let's use, I did find if anyone has used these fun little jewels, um, I found some of them stick really well and some of them don't. And so I've just been throwing a little bit of adhesive on the back. You never know <laughs> with embellishments. Alphabets are the same way. Some companies put great adhesive on the back of their embellishment or on their alphabets and some don't. So let's see. I'm going to throw that right up there. And I think we used one of every one of this month's upgrade kit add-ons then <laughs> as well. Like I said, I really enjoyed the the upgrades this month and usually there's three in this month or four which is awesome um i saw someone ask about my photo printer i have a canon um it's mg7120 it it doesn't do big 12 by 12s it goes up to eight and a half by 11 but i wanted a printer that does photos and papers really well and it uses two different inks um one for your papers one for your photos so you're not replacing your ink all the time um but i really like it i like my canon printer i would definitely get another one so this is May's kit, just in case um, anyone's late to the party. What I'm using is all my leftovers for a May's kit, along with May's sketch that you can find on the Facebook page, I believe is the easiest place to find it on Scrapbooking Store's Facebook page. And also, if you get the kits, there is a Scrapbooking Store Club member page as well that you can find it on. I will photograph this tomorrow. I should have plenty of light tonight to photograph it because it is only 7, I don't know, 7.30 by me, but we have cloudy, cloudy skies. So I'm going to photograph it. I like prefer to photograph in natural light on my layouts, and I will make sure that we get it up tomorrow so you can see this finished product photographed as well. Um, sometimes the colors are a little more true and stuff too when I photograph it. So um, we'll have that up, the details on the sketch challenge as well please please play along like i said we'd love to ooh and ah over what you do additionally any other layouts you make or cards or home decor items or anything you do with the kit we love when you share them with us on the facebook page we really do love seeing what you're doing and ooing and eyeing over it um, again i'm samantha taylor you can find me at taylor stamped on facebook and instagram and all the all of those and so make sure to follow me and make sure to follow scrapbooking store and if nobody else has any questions i think i will let everyone get back to their night and thanks so much for tuning in tonight and hanging out with me and especially those of you that hung in with me from the beginning when I was sideways <laughs> so um Canon is the photo printer that I have and it is a MG7120 sorry it's not too far for me to <laughs> step over and look um and I can uh throw that in the comments on here too when I get off as well like I said, I like, I, I don't know that they specifically make that one. I've had it for quite a while, but I do like, I do love printing my own photos at home. When I first got it, I, I needed a new printer and thought, oh, I'll get one that can do photos too. I'll do it sometimes. I do it all the time. I only print my photos now. I rarely send them out unless they're huge, something big. So, all right. Thanks again, guys. And um, share, share with us. And thanks so much for tuning in.